Welcome back everybody to linuxacademy.com. My name is Terry and in today's course we continue our preparation for the Linux Foundation Certified System Administration exam. We're in our HTTP services section and we're talking about setting up name-based virtual web hosts. In a previous video we, saw, we talked about how to set up a name-based virtual web host listening on port 80 HTTP for an Ubuntu-based system. And again, we're separating these out into Ubuntu or Debian-based distributions, as well as CentOS or Red Hat-based distributions, because they do work differently. The directory structures are differently, and the commands are, are a little bit different for enabling the, the various components. We're also separating HTTP from HTTPS in order to make all of this clear and not have a three-hour video on one topic. So now that we've covered HTTP virtual hosts for an Ubuntu-based or Debian-based distribution, let's talk a little bit about HTTPS. As you've seen, if you've been following along in order in this course, we've created self-signed certificates that we use in HTTPS or SSL-enabled websites in the past, but now we're going to be talking about how we can add them specific to a domain so that we can use different certificates, uh, self-signed certificates, based on the name virtual host that we're going to use. In this case, the name of our uh, service is TCOX5. In our Debian uh, Ubuntu named virtual host video previously, we looked at our var www directory. We created a TCOX5 and a custom index page. We'll go ahead and keep on with that. But what we need to do is we need to do a couple of other things. So if we go to our Etsy Apache 2 directory, the first thing we need to do is, although we don't need to install anything to support self-signed or full independent certificates, we do need to create a location for them, generate them, and we need to enable the SSL module so that Apache knows to use it. So the first thing that we need to do is, as we did with our virtual hosts, there's a nice little utility that Ubuntu and Debian systems provide called A2EN and then either conf, mod, or sites, depending on whether we're enabling vhost configurations or modules. In this case, we're enabling the SSL module. So if we go to, if we look at the directories here, we see that we have mods available. And we can look at our SSL, has an SSL configuration. But if we look at that our mods enabled, probably doesn't have SSL enabled because by default it's not. So what we need to do here is, a, is an easy A2 EN mod on SSL. Now we need to enable it by restarting Apache, but let's make sure that we now have a link and we do in the mods enabled directory, we have a link back to the mods available. So at this point we can do a service Apache 2 and restart. And we can also, if we want, we can enable the default HTTPS sites of, from sites available for sites enabled because right now in the sites enabled directory we only have the default HTTP configurations. So if we want the HTTPS site to also have a catch-all like the sites available does, then we can go into sites-available and see that there is a default SSL module that we can configure and make for our site available by doing an A2EN site. Once we configure the default SSL.conf to use the certificates that we'll generate now. So what we're going to do is we're just going to generate a, a default certificate and a default uh, key, but we're, we're not going to use it in the, in the default configuration. We're actually going to set up our own configuration. So what we need to do is we need to generate a key and a certificate and we're going to do that by using the open SSL utility and we'll paste in a command that I've already got written over here so that we get everything set up the way that we want. So we're going to create a directory in uh, Apache called SSL. So let's make a directory Etsy Apache to SSL and then we're going to paste in this command which generates an X509 certificate that expires in a year with a RSA 2048 bit key generating this key called Apache key 
and an output certificate using that key called apache.crt. Now we're going to put in the information that we want here and let's say from New York, even though that's not where we're at. Organization is Linux Academy. Uh, information technology. Let's put in tcox5.mylabserver.com and email address we'll say is web admin at mylabserver.com. Now, if we look in the SSL directory, we should see an Apache CRT, an Apache key. Now, if you want, we could have generated those keys and made them available for, um, for a specific URL. So we could have named it tcox5.mylabserver.com.crt. In this case, we just have them uh, named as is. So in order to create our named vhost for HTTPS, now that we've enabled the module, generated the key and the certificate, we need to go back to sites available and let's copy the default SSL to another configuration for TCOX5. And now this goes back to why we named it the way that we did. So if we copy default dash SSL, let's name it TCOX5 dot, and then we're going to say HTTPS dot conf. And now we have a configuration that's completely unique based on the protocol that it that it uh, it uses. So in this case, if we do tcox5.mylabserver.com underscore HTTPS, we'll see again, there's a, a bunch of stuff in here that we don't have to include except for the SSL engine needs to be on, the SSL certificate file, and the certificate key. These are the, the default certificates that are used just for, um, by default, uh, within an, an HTTP config, HTTPS configuration. They're kind of like, they, they're named snake oil because they're kind of default keys that are included with the distribution and installation, but they're not even as specific as a self-signed certificate in this case. So what we're going to do here is we're actually gonna change these so that they include our information. So the server admin, for example, is gonna to change to whatever. In this case, web, webmaster at localhost is fine. We don't really care about that. What we do care about here is we, we give it the path to the directory that we wanna use for the document root. We also wanna make sure that we add in a server name so that we know what to answer for. So in this case, we're going to do tcox5 dot my lab server dot com and then we could also do a server alias as we talked about before which if we were using my lab server dot com as the server name because it's a, a top level domain the server alias might be tcox5 dot my lab server dot com in this case we're just going to say tcox5 in case i'm doing local browsing and then let's see if we've got a document root that's already been defined for us it uh, doesn't look like it, so we'll add a document root up here, right under our server alias. Let's add document root, and then, oh, nope, sorry, we already did that at the top. And then we're also going to change the certificate files as long as we make sure the SSL engine is on, which we do, and we're going to change the default certificate file from this snake oil that's included we're going to change it to Etsy Apache 2 SSL. And since we named it Apache.crt, this is the actual certificate file. And then this will be the same thing, only it'll be the key. Apache 2 SSL and then Apache key. Nothing else in this file has to change. There are a number of options, including uh, you know, file matching for CGI and libraries, as well as logging information. We can override browsing or log browsing here. The other option that we want to make sure that we have set up is at the very top. You don't have to, to do anything with this. This is simply testing. It'll only use this module if the mod SSL is turned on. 
so that it doesn't inadvertently answer on port 443 if SSL is not being in use because you could technically list it on 443 without SSL enabled. In this case, we're saying only use this vhost if mod SSL is, is enabled and all we're going to do is answer for port 443 using the TCOX5 lab directory with the SSL module and certificates that we have enabled. Now that we have that created, then we do an A2 EN site on tcox5.mylabserver HTTPS configuration. And then finally, again, we're running on an Ubuntu 14.04 system, which is sys v init, which we would do a service Apache 2 restart. Once we do that, then we should be able to go over here, open up a new web browser, go to https tcox5.mylabserver.com. We get an untrusted connection. I understand the risk. Add the exception. Let's view our certificate. It tells us that the common name and the issued by, meaning that this is the URL for the SSL vhost. And this is the common name that it was issued by, so it tells us it's a self-signed certificate. Because we installed it, we understand that um, it, it comes with some risk because it's not issued by a third-party repository or, or verified signature. In our case, we signed it ourselves, but we're going to go ahead and confirm the security exception, and we get the tcox5.mylabserver.com. So, largely, vhosts are configured the same in terms of HTTP versus HTTPS, but we do have the, 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 the granularity of control by separating the configurations, not only to point them to different directories, but to enable the SSL specific features uh, the, the way that we've got it set up here. So we've got the tcox5.mylabserver set up on HTTP as well as HTTPS. We have a catch-all for HTTP I don't necessarily want a catch-all for HTTPS from a security standpoint. I don't want anybody thinking that, uh, that, that I have SSL enabled on a site because it indicates generally that I might have more sensitive information. So I'm going to want to be more targeted for that. I'd rather drop the connection if it doesn't match the specific domain that I want HTTPS to listen to rather than have it have a catch-all. But for named vhosts on Ubuntu and Debian systems, using SSL, that's all there is to it. My name is Terry for Linux Academy.